So it's been a year. One year ago today, this community and a family lost one amazing kid, and I just so happen to have lost a student. Now, I know there are some of you out there that have always wondered or even questioned why I feel like it's my place to speak on Easton in this light, considering he wasn't my own son or my own brother. And to those people, the best way that I can put it is this. When you're a teacher and you spend seven and a half hours a day, five days a week, and nine months out of the year with a group of kids, it's hard not to become a family. And like many kids over my teaching career, Easton and I had a great relationship. But for some reason, I always felt like him and I had a different kind of relationship. For some reason, I always felt like him and I were closer. There was always this mutual respect between him and I that I'll never forget. At 10 and 11 years old, I've never seen a kid walk into a room without ever saying a word and just completely own the room. He always made it look so effortless. He was always confident and he was always fearless, yet he was always so humble and kind. And one of my favorite things about being his teacher was watching him and the way he checked in on those around him. He always made sure his friends and his buddies were okay. He even checked on me from time to time. He'd see me at my desk, standing there by myself, thinking about something, and he would walk up to me, and in Easton's famous words, he would ask me, You good, bro? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm all right. Thanks for checking in. And now every single morning, I just take a look at this picture of him and I on his last day of fifth grade, and I always just say a few words to him to let him know that I'm thinking about him, knowing that he's looking down after me as well. So Easton, I just want to let you know, we're all thinking about you today, buddy. We all miss you. We all love you. But we all know you're running around up there playing ball.